Thanks for watching Council Wrap Up, a look at the top news of the Montgomery County Council for the month of November. Since 2002, the Street Smart program has worked to raise awareness about pedestrian and bicycle safety and highlight enforcement of the laws that protect people who are walking or biking. This month, a new effort to prevent pedestrian collisions was officially unveiled. It's a tragedy that happens all too often here in Montgomery County, pedestrian collisions. The problem that we're dealing with. In light of this, regional officials gathered in Silver Spring to kick off a new educational program that stresses safety on our roads. We need people to be visible. Big, big, big a trend in our crashes is people are not wearing a reflective clothing, reflective gear. Uh, it's a lifestyle that people want to be able to have, to you know, take a walk to the corner store or to ride your bike with your family on a Saturday. Our driving culture is you know, overly aggressive. People are always racing up to the next stop sign when they should just be stepping back. The end of daylight savings time means an increase in the number of pedestrians injured or killed during the evening commute. Regional data shows that in 2017, pedestrian crashes peaked during the month of November. This campaign educates drivers and pedestrians about how to stay safe during this time of year. Working on trying to get people aware, get drivers to slow down and look out for each other. The event included the launch of the new Street Smart Virtual Reality Challenge. The traveling exhibit is an interactive virtual reality experience where drivers encounter different traffic scenarios frequently associated with crashes involving people who are walking or biking. Sure, if you want to put your seatbelt on, safety right. first. Let's you see the blind spots that a driver has when they're driving or when they're trying to turn. So not only do you get the perspective of driving, but you also can understand where the blind points are. I'm driving down the street and I, there are pedestrians that are coming out and someone's crossing as a bicyclist in my blind spot. Montgomery County Police will also step up enforcement of traffic safety laws that protect pedestrians and cyclists that will include hefty fines. Officials want everyone to know during this dangerous time of the year to expect the unexpected. Thanks to funding from the county and the state of Maryland, there's reason to be optimistic about the opioid epidemic as officials broke ground on the new Avery Road Treatment Center. Here in Montgomery County, Avery Road Treatment Center has been instrumental in helping thousands of residents overcome addiction. And by 2020, more people seeking treatment will be able to use their services thanks to the county and the state of Maryland. And it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the groundbreaking for the brand new Avery Road Treatment Center. We want to do everything in our power to help restore hope and to put those in need on a path toward healing and recovery. Once complete, this Avery Road Treatment Center will provide the tailored treatment options, the safe haven, and the second chance that so many of our citizens desperately need. The new 37,000 square foot facility will replace the existing building that is more than 27 years old. You can see there's still blue tarp up there to keep the water out. Um, this building could not come soon enough for all of us. The new Avery Road Center will provide 64 beds for substance abuse treatment and also a one-stop shop recovery campus. This new facility will send a signal, a very strong signal, that addiction is a public health issue. It should not be a criminal justice issue. Though opioid overdose deaths are down, the increase in the use of synthetic fentanyl has posed a new challenge. And it's no place in Maryland or in Montgomery County that, that is, is, uh, is exempt. Officials stress this new facility will be prepared to meet the community's needs through its ability to address addiction issues of all kinds. And it's not just addiction to heroin, um, it's also cocaine, it's amphetamines, it's meth and alcohol. Alcohol is still very, very prevalent with us. The cost of the new facility is approximately $15 million and it's expected to be complete in early 2020. Good news for some residents in Clarksburg as work is moving forward on a new project that will bring improvements to this up-county community.
The town of Clarksburg is one of the fastest growing communities in Montgomery County. Over the past decade, the town has seen its population surge and new development there could push those numbers to as many as 50,000 residents. To support the infrastructure necessary for a future fire station in Clarksburg, Officials broke ground on a long-awaited sewer extension. It is important to the quality of life throughout Clarksburg. As you know, Clarksburg has grown, and we are immensely proud of the development and growth that is occurring, but we need to accommodate that with this particular facility. And so when I had my very first community meeting, it was right here in Clarksburg, and there were a number of things that folks had asked for. They'd asked for a fire station. They had asked for sewer to the historic district. They had asked for a grocery store. They had asked for Stringtown Road to be fixed. Well, folks, I'm happy to say all of those things are happening. Residents and businesses dependent on individual septic systems will also benefit from the project. Most of those are located in the historic district, which is considered an important component of the Clarksburg Town Center plan. And so from a public safety perspective, this is a huge win. From a public safety perspective in terms of the environment and getting people off of failing septic and getting them connected to sewer, this is a huge win. It's a huge win for those who have businesses who want to continue to expand and develop and make sure that they're meeting the needs of the Clarksburg community. This is a huge win for all of us. The project will cost about $3 million and it's expected to be complete within the next six months. And finally, we introduce you to a Montgomery County police officer and former local football star who is making a difference in the lives of some of the county's youngest residents. What's your name? Juliana. Juliana, that's a pretty name. Can I say hi to the rest of y'all? How are you? When you meet Montgomery County police officer Andre Smith, you might be intimidated by his size. But once you start a conversation with him, it's clear he's just a gentle giant. Okay. How are you? What's your name? Victoria. Victoria. Officer Smith makes it a point to get to know the young people in the up county district he serves. By gaining their trust, he's taking an important step in making these communities better places. What's going on? How are y'all doing? Recently, he spoke to a group of students at Clarksburg High School. With all the stuff y'all face as high schoolers, I've been there. I lived here, played basketball in these same gyms. So I'm honored that they asked me to come speak to y'all. But more importantly, I'm honored to get a chance to be here in front of every last one of y'all because I hope that y'all are the future. Y'all really matter. At six foot five, Officer Smith stands out in a crowd in more ways than one. Smith went through Montgomery County Public Schools and attended high school at Seneca Valley where he played football. And by most accounts, he's what you might call a late bloomer. Fortunately, I was blessed with, with size and athletic ability and all that stuff, but I actually just played backyard football. And all the neighborhood kids would come outside and play. And I actually did not start playing organized football until I was a freshman in high school. He enjoyed a successful football career at Seneca Valley and had several Division I schools offering spots on their squads. But when he graduated in 2006, he had accepted a football scholarship to Virginia Tech. The biggest difference about Virginia Tech is he was the only recruiter. A guy named Tony Ball was his name. He came in and talked to me about academics first. And knowing that my education is going to go so much further than sports ever will or could, that immediately drew my interest. How you doing, man? But behind the scenes, Andre Smith was dealing with more than the pressures of choosing a college. His mother, Jolita, fought leukemia for 10 months during his junior year, and she passed away when he was 16 years old. She was the most determined, hardworking woman I've ever met. Um, she had a lot of struggles. She did a lot on her own, most of everything on her own. And no matter what, she did what she needed to do to provide for us. He'll tell you those first few months without his mom were tough. It was the hardest time of my life. He and his two siblings stayed in their Germantown townhouse until things took a turn for the worse. My sister was hanging with the wrong people and got my house shot up in Germantown. Uh, probably about a total of 17 bullets went through my townhouse. And that was all because she chose to go down the wrong path. She chose to bring around the wrong people. But despite the odds, he stayed true to the values his mother instilled in him before she died. Once I lost my mother, she's the single most important person to me in my entire, entire world. And um, knowing what she expected of me kept me through and pushed me through. Um, that determination and that, that chip on the shoulder to 
succeed, not just in academics, not just in sports, but again, just the, that work ethic of giving it 150%. If you're gonna do it, do it right. Have mom, right there. have mom here. For Smith, the memory of his mother is never far. He wears a tattoo on his arm in honor of the woman he says made him the man he is today. He carried that work ethic she instilled through college and made Seneca Valley history when he went on to play for the NFL's Chicago Bears. But as far as like the achievement of getting there, no words can really describe that. Um, no words can really describe that. I just kind of felt like one of the lucky ones, one of the lucky ones to achieve that goal. Smith went on to play for the Indianapolis Colts, the Dallas Cowboys, and the Cleveland Browns before retiring early due to a back injury. He came home to Montgomery County and decided to pursue a career with Montgomery County Police. He graduated from the police academy in 2017, and today he patrols the area where he grew up. Good to see you. And, and I've always wanted to be a police officer. When I used to envision a police officer, um, I envisioned a patrol car like this and good guys driving around and shining a spotlight down into the alleys of the dark alleys where bad people are. Um, I envision them being like superheroes and superheroes that come and, and when people are in need and people are in the lowest of the lowest, they're, they're able to come and, and save them and help them in any form or fashion. In the short time he's been with the department, he has earned a Medal of Valor for going above and beyond the call of duty by safeguarding shoppers in a Michael store and apprehending an armed and dangerous individual. A, a, a man looks to be in his early 20s, he's wearing shorts and a t-shirt and he's got a knife in his hand. They're able to, to, to tackle him, get him down, get the knife away from him, put him in handcuffs. And he makes it part of his job to stay connected with the community. It's nothing like being home, living right down the street and patrolling the area where I grew up. Because nonetheless, it's changed quite a bit. But still, I want to help preserve what it's always been, you know, and, and try to help with crime rates, try to just be a friendly face that people can actually see and be encouraged by. And when you watch him with the youngest members of his community, you know he's home. Well, that does it for this edition of Council Wrap-Up. For all the Council's news, you can visit their website. I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching.